Okay. So everyone, welcome to a phenomenal, this is, I, I can officially now say, I am in the presence of a brilliant soul, um, who I'm just really grateful to have had the honor of interviewing previously. Story time, quick story. <laughs> the problem was that I didn't hit the record button. I thought that I selected that prior to sending the link, but um, she did not record and my spirit was fully broken. I was devastated. I'll have to tell you. I'll be honest. It was for, for our eyes only. You know, they weren't ready for it. Oh, such phenomenal conversation. And like, I, I, yes, I'll keep it here. I'll do, I'll do like Prince told Beyonce when everyone was looking for the formation tour DVD. They'll have it in here. Like, <laughs> my spirit. So everyone, I am, I am so honored to once again have here Plato the Third. Um, are your pronouns, what are your pronouns? I'm going to make sure I get those correct. It's our he, him. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, I I can tell you, y'all are in for a treat because, like I said, we've had we've had this interview prior, and um, I I you're a friend in my head. I just can't even front. Like I I I just you're just one of those folks. I love that you have that magnetic energy through like the screen. Like so, thank you for bringing that energy here. And um, just joining us back here. My, my name is Britton with the numbers. I'm the music content coordinator, if I didn't say that. And uh, once again, we have Plato the Third. So everybody give a, a round of applause. <laughs> kind of energy. You know, it's always great to be back. I'm glad we get to, to chat again now that uh, Rap Shit is officially released. I know. You know I, <laughs> I know. <laughs> conversation last time, I'm talking insecure. So actually, I haven't seen the pilot yet okay i'm sure you have yes i've seen it i've seen it four times now um no did they only released one or did they do the whole season two they seven? have two episodes two yeah. episodes and um um okay since we're going there yeah you want to start um with? we shared an amazing love for insecure um and <laughs> plato is reggie hive apparently and reggie meaning lawrence well, <laughs> Oh, I thought that was the one thing we could improve from the last one. I, I got uh, Lawrence's name mixed up. Yeah. I honestly thought it was like copyright stuff. So I was like, oh, well, maybe you're just using, he's using a different name or something. Like, it's some, cool. Yeah, that was some LA industry stuff. He wasn't even ready. No. I don't know. <laughs> Lawrence, Lawrence. But um, I did watch it. And I have to be honest with you, like, it's great. Good writing. You can tell, you can tell when. I can hear your voice. I can already hear you. <laughs> He's I, I need to let I was hurt. Yeah. I need to let the season ride out. I need to see the rest of it. Um, I don't want to do any comparisons, but like I just can't help but feel my need and desire for insecure when I watch this. I'm just like, ah, just I'm trying to remember was was insecure an instant an instant feeling. I feel like it was, but you know, that was like five years ago now. But I think it was. I just can't imagine not. Loving it from the jump. You know? I loved it from the jump I because think. I was like, you're speaking to me. Yeah. Like, I need you. We need each other. We see each other. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so I don't have, I like to, I don't like to let these streaming companies get me, you know, so I'll do like one at a time. So this month I'm not paying HBO. I'm on my, uh, what am I paying this month? Oh, Apple Plus. Check okay. Watch everything in a month and then next week or next month I get to HBO. So, I'll, uh, I haven't seen rap shit yet. I gotta wait for my okay. Apple Plus to expire. I would love for you, if we can do a little DM conversation once yeah, you see it. I just want to get your thoughts on that. Like, and maybe we need to set up another interview for that. I don't know. But um, I want to, it, it's hot boots out here in Portland, Oregon. Like, honestly, before we started this interview, I had literally just said to my director, I was like, I'm tired as hell. Like, <laughs> this is, I was like, I'm so tired because it's so hot. How oh, how hot? It's about one. Today's 102, 103. Mm -hmm. I know that's light work compared to like. No, nah, it's not because I mean, old Texas. I haven't been in Texas in a while, but yeah, LA. It, it's true what they say about the weather. I was in Las Vegas a couple weeks ago. Mm -mm. You just can't go outside. Vegas is scorching, yeah, and I... it it's frustrating because I'm just like, why y'all don't use no solar panels out here? Like why? Like you got every you got all those resources you need to just make the the solar panel stuff happen. 
If any, yeah, if anybody was doing solar panels, you would think it was them. Maybe it's too hot for the solar panels. I don't really know. Science. Maybe it'll burn the panels. It's, it's too hot for anything. I don't know. Child. Every, I, I hope you're staying hydrated. I hope everyone you know and love is staying hydrated. But that heat is bringing me to now the title of your newest piece of work called <laughs> The Devil Has Texas. And I guess the devil has Portland this week at least. Okay, so, catch it. Now, yeah. what, what, what? Um, before I, before we go into that question, I'm curious to know what's bringing you joy today. Um, you know what? Uh, so I'm fresh. Right before we was doing this, I was uh cutting up some new tunes. So I, I was I hopped in the studio for the first time since the album dropped. I guess last week, oh. did four freestyles. You know, a little light work, but. I uh, it sounds good and it's, it's just fun to be playing, you know, with some music again. So a little gentle, uh, same old, song. same old, you know, a little, little some sounds, you know, some sounds and some vibe. And that's what's bringing you some joy today is that you kind of and you felt a flow of energy when in that creation process, like it felt like right for you. Because I remember the last time we talked, you were just like, you go with, you kind of work with the feeling and how it arrives and how it comes to you. Yeah, yeah. At that time, you know, I had some. Uh, uh, it's a friend of mine. His his beat. He kind of does this. I don't know if you up on this, but it's like lo-fi hip hop. It's kind of yes. like people study to now, or if they don't want to hear lyrics, it's on this lo-fi hip hop community. Yes, he makes those beats like no lyrics, but you know they're chill and they kind of bring out some of my, uh, I guess, more introspective rhymes. So I rapped on one of his, and and yeah. Just trying to play with it a little bit, make it a little bit more uh, hip hop. But, but yeah, it was. I'm excited. Hopefully, I can release that sometime in the next couple of months. Okay. Well, um, looking for. Yeah. <laughs> look, looking, I'm pointing to my finger and my the palm, the center of my palm. Everyone, definitely looking forward to that because. Um, and I, I, one, I'm glad that's bringing you so much joy. It's really awesome to hear that your creative process is moving. You know, however, whatever the pace is, I think that's brilliant. Congratulations on that 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 inspo um i do want to just gravitate back to that that initial question that was like wh where did that title come from yeah so you know one you know it's hot hot as uh, hot as hell in texas you know so uh it was always easy uh to make that connection but there's this uh daniel johnston song it's called spirit world rising mm. and uh he's like a kind of a niche singer songwriter from austin texas that there was this whole documentary about him. It was called The Devil and Daniel Johnson. I think uh, like Lana Del Rey and Mac Miller helped uh, get that funded. Anyway, when I lived in Austin, I got to know him, uh, his, his work and his music. And apparently, you know, he dealt with some mental health issues. And it all kind of stemmed from when he graduated high school and he moved to Abilene, the town mm -hmm. I'm from. Mm -hmm. He got there, kind of had a bad acid trip. And it, it was never the same. And he kind of, he, he wrote about his time there. And he said, uh, I have been to Abilene. The devil has Texas. Oh. And so I, as a, someone from a town that not many people know about, I was trying to figure out, all right, how do I make this album about where I'm from and kind of introduce people to this, this part of the world they might not know. And so the, the intro of the album is actually covering that Daniel Johnson song, Spirit World Rising. I add a little rap verse in there. But yeah, I just kind of want to set the stage with a, a song that might be one of the few that have ever talked about Abilene. We don't really have many pop culture relevant mm -hmm. facts. Um, it's kind of that. And, um, you know, we, we had the highest voting turnout for Donald Trump in the 2020 uh, election. So it, as, I wouldn't call it, I, I'd say that's infamous, you know, but yeah, we, we kind of, we're not known for good things. Okay. Did you, yeah. is that one of the reasons why you kind of maybe left Abilene? Like, like, what, did you feel unsafe and you needed, it was time to get out of there? Yeah, so that, that was, I left 2011. So I left a while before that, but it's that same sort of energy. It's just a, an interesting place where it's kind of got these hyper-conservative values. Mm -hmm. And there is a large, you know, African-American population, uh, minority population. Um, but it's all kind of separated in this way that you know, oh, you there is segregation. Like, yeah, yeah. You, you wanted some opportunity. You're, we're actually like three and a half hours out of any major town, so like we didn't really get people coming in to do shows. Mm -hmm. You know, 
people rarely came out. You know, my mom didn't want to travel travel three and a half hours on the weekend, you know, just right. to go to see a show or something. So yeah, you just kind of feel like you're in the middle of nowhere and kind of desolate and desperate. So yeah, I was I was hungry for more. I wanted to see what the world had to offer. My first step was Austin. Uh and then ultimately came out to LA to uh, is, is Abilene historically, is that historically like what's its history? Is its history rooted with black people or black and brown people or is it or no, it was if I so historically for time you mentioned segregation, I believe it was the last city to end segregation. Um there's something on Wikipedia about that. I think it was like 70s, and it might not be early 70s. Okay. And uh yeah, and then also it's known uh, along with Nashville, they call mm. it the Bible of the buckle, uh the buckle of the Bible belt. Yeah. Because there's more churches per square mile than anywhere in america i don't know if that's still true but it was that so it's it's a weird thing where you're surrounded by religion and god and these things that should be giving you hope and faith yeah. but uh what you see is kind of like poverty and and real uh struggle and it's weird and i think that's that as i've traveled that's the case around all of the world where this idea of like uh religion and god it's not necessarily tied to uh, a better lifestyle or right. I, I, I would say goodness or a little rooted in oppression yeah plentiful uh yeah. opportunity for abundant everybody. yeah <laughs> Lack of abundant. Like, so, opulence so, icon <laughs> so yeah wow. so, to wrap it all the devil has sex is i wanted to tie on that and then also if i had to talk about Adeline, i had to talk about religion so yeah. You know, I think the album's me still wrestling with like where I'm from, how religion falls into that, how poverty falls into that, and how those two kind of coincide. Um, you know. Wow, it, you're really rooted. Uh, so you know, I did a deep dive into you and your work um, as we had in the last conversation, and so I mean, I really get a sense of your connection to your roots. You know, and it's 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 got to be a bit. It's like I want I commend you. But I also recognize that that's where you're from and that is where you draw, where you be, where you begin your journey. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, I commend you for for drawing on that, getting out of that space, thriving in your creativity as it comes to you. Um, but even in your earlier music, I could tell that you had a deep connection to those roots, even. Um, and again, again, I don't know why I did this again, but that video where I talked about where you had the man bun, it's called Love, right? <laughs> that song was called Love. No love, no love. No love. It was called No Love. Yeah, I could just, I know, I had I had a sense of, like, legitimacy and authenticity from that video. I loved the man bun. I know we had conversation about this, but... That was, that was an era. That was an era. Yes, yes. Um, I went home to shoot a video. You know, I couldn't find a, my, uh, my old braider. My hair braider wasn't in town no more, so I was, I was, I was up, up the creek without a paddle, as they say. Yeah, we had the rock the man but still shoot the video. Um, but yeah, yeah, no love. That was yeah, still wrestling with the same thing. Just had a, a few uh homies from back home that was still there and trying to do a little low budget, you know, music video. Okay. Uh, you know what? And another question I didn't get to ask you the last time was because I referenced woman, that that was another track that I absolutely loved. And I was curious. Uh, yeah. Is the is the person in that video actually pregnant? She yeah, she was. She was. Okay. Yeah, so we were looking for uh a pregnant woman ideally. We know that would be difficult. Um I had a, a whole different vision for the video uh, initially, but we found uh Raven was her name. Okay. She was also a dancer. Shout out to Raven. That's what I was gonna ask. Yeah. I was <laughs> so gonna she ask. was a dancer, she was pregnant. And I didn't initially see dance in the video, but she was like, you know, I can, that's what I do. And even though I think she was six or seven months pregnant at the time, she was like, I want to dance up in here too. So it was really, you know, it was kind of the perfect person for uh, that video and to tell that story. And she, we, and we, we also. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, I said we also gave her this, this, you know, the, this video that she can always hold, you know, it's almost like a, a, a really nice uh, maternity photo shoot. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. I, and it was just her the entire video, right? Because you weren't in that. No, no, I wasn't in that one. Uh, it was primo. It was so brilliant. The cinematography of it, like the, the, 
the close shots, the panning forwards, and just her movement quality, such an astounding visual. Like, I loved that. I love the song. I love the opening of that video and the, the the saying that's in the front. I just, I connected very deeply to that. And I just really wanted to tell you that, like, beautiful choices, beautiful gown. We loved it. The choreo, the <laughs> inspo, it was all there. And I love the, the location. Yeah, thank you, Brittany. Yeah, that was back in Austin, uh, directed by Erica Silverman, who mm -hmm. actually I got to link back up with on this album. She, yeah. she directed the Give Em How video. It's all right. It's okay. That that whole sort of six minute video that I premiered with. So, yeah, that I'm so glad that video exists, and I made that relationship. And then as soon as I had a video to do for this, I, I called her back and said, "Hey, I'm coming back to Texas." You know. Yeah. It, yeah. It well, I mean, continuing on with with um, the Double Has Texas. Uh, one of the things I I love. I, I'm I'm literally a track listener from beginning to end for this album. Like they're, they're, it's a journey. It's an experience. Um, you're getting you're getting shifted. I'm I'm personally getting shifted in different dimensions. And I what how that album starts and the journey it, uh, sonically is not no <laughs> expectations for this album. Right. It's just like, don't think that you've got a lock on. What this album is going to be from track to track. It's just it, it, it it's super cohesive super melodic, super dissonant, super alternative, super R&B, super rap, super, super classical. Um, you just, you are, you have a gift. There's a gift in this album where there is a tie-in of so many elements and in normally too many elements is too much, but there's a way that, sh that this was all weaved together that gives it such a fullness and enriching experience. Like I told you, the songs for me, I'm gonna go through them. Uh, the songs for me that that really just ca the whole album caught my spirit, but um, it's all right, it's okay. Holiday, heaven, summon the base god, Ouro Ouroboros, and sorry if I dished you. Like, I mean, that's practically the whole the whole album. <laughs> that opener is is a sleigh. That opener is a sleigh, and I just because I, I remember I was like, I don't know what I'm fitting to listen to, but yeah, then. <laughs> I I was I was so like I said it it it, it I was I was transitioned to another layer of just sound through each album and and, and it's just such an ex I mean through each track and it was, it's just such an experience I don't even I feel like saying track is disrespectful <laughs> like like that's what it's called that's what each it's energetic called. It, each energetic uh, uh, presentation I don't know like gas <laughs> me up gas me up. Man. <laughs> I'm going to boost you. I'm just going to boost yeah. you because I'm not somebody that's going to like sugarcoat this. Like, like I appreciate the artistry and the authenticity. So, oh, um, where do you, where did you get that? Where does that come from? It's because it gives me, I know you worked with, did you work with a lot of folks? I don't think you worked with that many folks. A lot of, a lot of folks from back home. So it was me and one other uh, uh, producer mainly messing with the music and, mm -hmm. and the composition. And I wrote the lyrics myself, but uh, yeah, it was just me and my friend from back home. We went to a studio, kind of knocked these out. And then there are a lot of features on there. So I'd send the, send the tracks back home to artists in uh, Abilene. So I just felt like I was telling my story, but if I wanted to tell the full story, I needed different perspectives. You know, from my city, I grew up one way, but other people grew up different ways. But I think all come together, we can really give a representation of what the town is about, which is my whole goal. Um, but yeah, I, I think I said this last time where for me, every time I make a song, is trying to do something that I didn't do on the last one, do something new. And so ultimately, if I do that, I feel like maybe I'll do something that nobody's done before because I'm trying to do something new every time. And that was the goal. You know, it's hard for me to make the same song twice. You do want to make it cohesive, though, to your point. Yeah. Going all the things in. And so the cohesion here was like, you know, let's, Try to make them all guitar bass and start with the guitar. And so maybe they'll all kind of feel the same. And if I am working with one primary musician, then hopefully that'll transfer over to that cohesion. So mm -hmm. yeah, hopefully we achieve that and, and uh, kept it still kept it interesting though along the way. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, I, I love listening to as doing that deep dive. I love I just have loved the 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 continuation of evolution in your sound and the, the exploration in an industry where 
I feel like there's a little piece. I mean, now that now that you can literally like put your own, uh, you can be independent. You can put your own stuff out there. You can be more uh, um, explorative, or um, or you can explore more. Uh-huh. Like, ex- yes, and experimental. Like, but I feel that. But I feel like there's those old traditional industry ways that try not to try to get you out of that. You know, like talking about people. Were, I was listening to something this morning where they're saying Division came out with this new song. If I get caught. And they were saying, like, I've been listening to Division from the jump. Give me old Division, OVO Division, all of that all day. I love the Muse album. I love um, that remake of uh, Your Sex is on Fire. I lo- that whole Division and um, uh, Ty Dolla Sign album. But then people were saying, like, oh, well, you know, people weren't noticing me before. But now I made, like, a little toxic song and everybody's got their eyes on me. So, like, I'm mm-hmm. saying is just, like, I love that, like, you you maintain the integrity, integrity is not the word because I, I, it's, it's not, I love that you maintain, like, it doesn't feel like you're like, I gotta do this in order to, to gain momentum, you know? Yeah, I mean. If but I, if you do, it's fine. I for me if I did. Yeah, yeah, if you, if you do, if you do a hands on the knees, uh, yeah, then, you I, know, pop it, pop it. always in the back pocket. You know, I'll pull it out if I got to. <laughs> If you yeah. pull out, if you pop, if you pull out a a, a, a pop and bop, I'm I'm yeah. down. You're down for it. I'm in. Yeah. I'm in. I'm just saying, like At all times. Yeah, there's a place for everything. It's no, it's a place. Mm-hmm. I was uh, so I've been doing a summer camp for car, you know, this summer just to get paid doing this uh, this with these kids. I think like two to six year olds just going in and 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 coaching them up. And it's me and this other coach. Uh, and he was giving me a ride for the first time today. He's like, you know, what you listen to? Who's your favorite artist or whatever? I was like, you know, probably Frank Ocean these days. And, you know, he was like, oh, Drake, you know. And then he's like, you, you heard this uh, Jack Harlow Drake song and he's playing for me. And I, you, he, he told me he had checked some of my stuff out. And so this was kind of a moment where I'm listening to what he listens to. And I'm like, where, what song do I have that fits into these certain vibes, you know, a certain mood? And. And I am, I think one of the, maybe the, the consequences is, is of going so experimental. I was like, what, when music is such a casual listen for a lot of people, you know, it's just one of some of the vibe to in the back or whatever, you know, what my music necessarily, I don't know, I don't know if it fits there. So I, I have been thinking about that more and more, like making sure that maybe I have something that is, is also, you know, Casual for casual listening because I didn't know. I was like, man, he listened to Jack Harlow. What, what do I have for a Jack Harlow fan? I don't know if I can. <laughs> listen. You got something. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna boost you even more. Okay, I, say something. Here. I just had a, a thought process of like who I could see you collaborate with. Now, okay. you may want to take notes on this, you may not. I love, first of all, I love that lo fi. Um, Oh, that, the low that lo-fi, the uh, uh, you know, beat and vibe. I love that. I think that is super sexy. I love like a haunting R and B melody. Like, okay, mm. if there are three people who I could see you with right now, off the top of my dome, collaborate with Holly Bailey because the clips that she is putting out oh. in regards to like her sound sonically, I I am so drawn to that. I don't know if you get a chance to just listen to her sounds. She hasn't come out with anything yet, but like the stuff she's working on is is mind blowing. Um, so Holly Bailey, Black or Six Lack, who uh, that's who I call it. <laughs> and I could see you working with. <laughs> call him Six Lack. He's trying so hard to get people to call him Black. I I six get black. it. It's it, but it's it's Six Lack for me. <laughs> it's Six Lack. I love it's Six Lack to the day I die. But I'm I will never call him that to his face. Yeah. And big, I could see you with working with Big Crit. Oh, from the south, yeah. You know, like, I actually I reached out to Big Crit uh, to get on this album initially. I was trying to, on this R S O K. There's an open yeah. verse in the second half. I ended up kind of making a guitar solo thing, but mm. I was like, I reached out to Big Crit, uh, Bun B. Yes, Zero is a hometown favorite. You know, I I don't know if he's as popular, but I, I kind of want like a a Texas legend or, or a Southern yeah. legend on there. And I I hadn't been signed yet, so I didn't really have the connects, but but. I would love, yeah, I'd love to to, to do a track with one of those rap legends. Listen, I could see it. I could see it. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put yeah, that out there. there. I have a tendency to call these things out, and then they actually happen. Okay. Okay. This is, this is recording, so we got this is recording. Receipts. <laughs> 
I only ask for a small fee of five ninety nine. <laughs> but when this happens, I'm super thrilled for you. Like I, I know it will. I, I, I can just. I don't know. I just. I feel that coming. That energy coming from you, and I know it will happen. And I have. A t- I have. I, I've. Ca- I have manifested so many like things for folks i really stand by this i'm like it's gonna happen it's gonna happen right place. i'm putting that on you i'm putting that on you um what has what is your, what is your um your process been in creating like this album in terms of like i feel like everyone has their own length of time everybody every artist every performer is different so how, you, how long did it take you to build this piece um yeah so I think I try to in between albums. So technically, it was it's been like three years before I since I released my last album. I just try to live life in between albums. I'm not one of the the, the musicians that's like constantly in the studio, going every day. You know, let's knock it out. I'll make 200 songs and pick the 10 best. You know, I just uh, when I'm ready, when I have something to say, I know it and uh, I go. And so once that happened here, like I went back home for about 45 days and in that time you know I had everything written um and then once I got in the studio uh I had like 10 demos and my boy Philip Odom he helped me sort of block you know put some gloss on it and, and produce those it. tracks up yeah <laughs> made, made it all uh made it all come together added a lot of live instruments and that was only about like seven or eight studio days um once once uh, I brought it to him. So um yeah. Wow. So you take the Sade approach to releasing music is what I'm hearing. You're just yeah. like you're like you're like, what's that phrase that Beyonce used? Uh uh come back, F it up, leave, come back, <laughs> F it up, leave again or something like that. So that's what you're giving. You're giving Sade, you do, you just fly off the map. Sade. What does that in between time look like? Like what does so first album, three years. What do you do in three years? Yeah. Yeah. So it's funny. It's, it's, I, I have to like, I have to create to make myself feel better. And so I'm, if I'm happy, I don't really want to go record anything. Cause I'm like, I'm trying to soak up that happiness, enjoy life, you know, but when, when something goes wrong and I feel almost like confused inside or, or disrupted, then I need to really get my feelings out and express myself, you know, to, to figure out how I'm feeling. Oh, if if I didn't record in three years, that means I was doing okay. You know, I was, okay. and then actually in that time, actually, what happened? I I went, I made a movie, so I thought I was doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, light flex, light flex alert, everyone. Yeah. Light flex, because none of you have could ever. Yeah. That's what I. I uh, <laughs> give up on music, and I was like, what if I I love writing? That's my favorite part mm-hmm. of music. I was like, what if I've been writing the wrong things instead of writing songs? I should write a screenplay. So I wrote this screenplay and I tried to get it made nobody would help me so me I made it with my apartment building there's a few people in my apartment building for like about five thousand dollars kind of everybody invested a little bit and uh yeah it, we didn't it didn't do big numbers we didn't get our dreams made of like getting into Sundance Film Festival or anything but it is on Amazon Prime it is streaming Oh, you. Yeah. Oh, let me get. Uh, uh-uh. let me get. Let me get my phone uh, <laughs> down. And you did not tell me this the last time we spoke, sir. No, I, I. Uh, <laughs> the in nerve! My, in my head, they're two different ideas. You know what I mean? It's like I got, I got me trying to make a film career happen, and then yeah. me trying. To, What's it uh, called? Uh, I'm watching tonight. It's called Let Me Be Frank, and uh, yeah, it's basically inspired by when I moved to LA, my apartment manager was this older Italian dude from yeah. the Bronx. Yeah. And like when I first met him, I was like, oh the Bronx, you know, where hip hop was born. Be heck. He wasn't yeah, he wasn't that type of Bronx that he was like, uh no, that's not what I know it for. I remember, you know, when they was putting graffiti all around the city and Oh, I city, knew it. You know? Yeah. And I was like what? And, and so we ended up moving in that house and he, I mean he was my landlord for a couple of years mm. and I got to know him a little better and uh got to understand him a little more and so mm. I thought I thought there was a little simple movie that could be made there uh, about kind of two unlikely excuse me there's nothing films. simple about making a film <laughs> it was yeah, it was hard it was probably the hardest thing I ever did wow what okay I really do want to like 
keep on like the album, but and I'll I'll get there. But like, what else are we missing? Are you, what instruments do you play? No, see, that's why that's why I was like, maybe I shouldn't be doing music because I just like writing. I think is my gift. I don't play. You know, I can play keyboard. Like you know, I can make. Uh, I, if you give me enough times, I can record a nice piano piece. But yeah. live, I probably wouldn't be too great. But no, I just I like writing, and so I, I I've written songs, I've written screenplays. I wrote an article about just like the music scene in Abilene. From, okay, uh, what's that? What's that called? That's that's on that's on Plato the Third dot com. I kind of have them all broke out there. It's, I got a music section, a film section, and a writing section. I don't have much in the writing, but how did I miss this? I guess I got so caught up in like the videos and everything. I didn't. I need to go to the website. I need to go to the website. I'm going to see all of this. It's okay, a radio station. It's supposed to, you know music first. It makes yeah. Sense. Wow. wow. So yeah. all of these pieces come together to to craft the these amazing like skills in the writing. I'm I'm super impressed with writers. Like I okay. I'm not gonna disrespect this singer like this, but one of the things my, 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 when my friends be like, uh, I love Keisha Cole. <laughs> And I love oh. Keisha. I love Keisha. I love Keisha. I love. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me, I love Keisha Cole. But there's been <laughs> some lyrics that I've been like, mm. okay, that's a little like, uh, too, like just improved. direct. <laughs> Woke up this morning, put two feet on the ground. <laughs> I look to the right and look to the left. I stand. Are those those ain't real lyrics? No, but it's <laughs> a little. It's a little. It ha- there's some songs that have that kind of simplicity yeah. to it that you know I just we all got different gifts you know hers is her pipes I mean she got a voice like no like if yeah, I absolutely could do that I wouldn't write either I'd be like y'all y'all write I'll sing it yeah <laughs> I don't got that but I, just... I don't write <laughs> I, I apologize Miss Cole please don't 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 ruin me I I just I just there was this few songs that I was like oh that's uh huh like. <laughs> I'm going to edit this out. I'm going to edit this out. I love writers. I, and that, that, and what's funny is I made fun of that. And then I remember when I I had my, I've done some music, you know, and I've done some writing and it's a, it's a skill and it takes time and you have to like do it over and over again, sometimes for hours and some folks it comes through naturally. Um, But it's a true gift that I want. I've, I've kind of secretly always just wanted to like develop is what is your writing is does it just come to you naturally or like do you also it's a different it feels like it's a different case per in whatever field you're in and it's a case-by-case situation right yes uh, for me it was really really difficult to begin but at this point like i got my ten thousand hours you know what they say and, and at this point if I'm feeling something, like I can't, it's hard for me to write if I'm not feeling something. But if I'm feeling something, I've got a good job, like being in tune with myself and putting that on the paper. Um, so, yeah, when I'm inspired, I'll write songs pretty quickly. But the screenplay, for example, that's kind of why I wanted to challenge myself to do that. That was super hard. You got to write 100 pages. You're just looking at a blank page. Mm. And so what I, I told myself to get through that was like, if I can write one page per day, I can finish this in three months, you know, 90 days. And so my goal is just one page per day. I think it took, uh, I think it took, I can't remember, it was like 130 days. So I didn't even do that. I think I averaged that, I was getting like half a page per day. So it was very hard to do that. Um, uh, but songs at this point have been a little easier for me. But yeah, like writing is hard and it's not fun. Mm. Like at the end, it's like, oh, that's amazing. I'm so glad I got that out. But I've never, I've never been excited to write, you know? I feel like yeah, and I think people don't I, people miss that that piece of the craft. It's just like y'all like don't get caught up in the glam of this. Don't get caught up in the glitz. This is real like <laughs> challenging yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot to go through, and I and I feel like it gets so sometimes can get overshadowed by the, the glam and glitz of it all. And I'm just like y'all, this is like you have to really. Cicely Tyson said it. Go learn your craft. <laughs> go learn your craft. Go find your motivations. So not even outside of what your craft is, you know, go explore nature, go, go see a theater show, go learn piano, go learn Spanish. You know, there's so many things that contribute to those skills. And like, I've always felt like people had to be well read in order to write good music. 
Like, because, like, the metaphors, the words, like Mariah Carey. I'd be like, girl, did you open the dictionary here? Like, did you just find, did you go to the thesaurus? Like, where did you find that word? Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yeah. So you, Mariah Carey's one of the ones you, you, you appreciate the writing ability. Yes, because her wordplay is hilarious. It's, 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 it's funny. No, um, I love SZA's writing. I love oh, I mean, Solana's writing. Oh, yeah, SZA. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, when you asked me last time, uh, you know, dream collaborators, it's, that's why SZA's up there, because I, mm -hmm. I kind of feel like, yeah. I mean, the way she even floated on that Doja Cat track, you know. It, I'm like, where did, yeah. where did you find that? Where do you, her arrangements. Her, the, the words that she chooses to use, I saw a breakdown of, Broken Clocks is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. To this day, um, and I just found, I saw a breakdown of it the other day on YouTube, and I was like, oh, God, I had it, I had it right, but I had it wrong. Like, mm -hmm. like I mean, where do you find, where, I wonder where people find that, where, what space is that? Like, what part of the multiverse is that? Like, what, <laughs> what, what which layer of existence or what plane is that? Because I'm just like, how did you, develop that like and that's that's what i love about you is it's like i'm just like where do you where, where do you go to where do you tap into to, to... yeah some sort of I, in my opinion some sort of uh consciousness and they said like people think of the word genius as mm -hmm. like something you label someone i remember i think it was <laughs> i think it was this writer elizabeth holmes or something no, i don't remember her name but she was talking about we need to think of genius as like almost like uh, this, this higher power that can reach all of us. And it's not mm -hmm. and when somebody's genius, that's somebody who's tapped into sort of this, this unconscious realm that, that, you know, can bless us at any time, as long as we're open, open, you know, and we're like, we're kind of the vessel for this other thing to speak through us. And so I think, I think like, it's like that a lot of times, you know, being, well read, that means also being open to learning things. But so a lot of times I think it's just something, you know, what are, what are people in, in tune with? I think that's a bigger question. Is it is it something we all have? You know, we're all made out of stardust. Are we, is it, if yeah. we're quiet and, and meditate, are we tapping into like the thing that bonds us all together? I'd like to think of that, you know, mm. maybe someone would say it's, it's God speaking through you, you know, whatever it is, I think. We're all connected in some way and that's when, Real artists can tap into that. We, we can feel it through the music, yeah, you know, or the or the film or the art. It's it it's the storytelling that I think I love a good storytelling in a song. Yeah, you know, and it doesn't have to be uh, A B C D E F G. You know, <laughs> it, it can be it can be A B A A A C A B. Yeah, you know, fragmented. Um, I think that's one of the things I love about Bjork. You know, it's just like, damn, girl. Mm. Okay, I, I, I see you. I hear you. <laughs> All is full of love. Trying, Thank you. <laughs> trying to uh, go back to because when I was in the car with my 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 other other coach today, and he's listening to like Jack Harlow. I'm like, I I want my music to reach everybody. You know, what I mean, I want to connect with everybody. I mean, if anything, it's the people like my parents that are like, maybe not don't have the time to really deep dive in music. They're just turning the radio on or maybe they're at the gym and like music's coming from the speaker. Like I, I want to reach everybody with some sort of like, you know, positive uh, kind of vibe. And so you're trying to think about how, how I can do that. You know, York, for example, maybe that's a little bit more experimental or art, art, uh, artistic than and it wouldn't be for everybody. But I think I do, even though I, I cherish storytelling and everything. You talk about doing the, the twerk songs. Like, you know, I, for me, reaching people is important. So if I, I think maybe a goal of mine or a challenge moving forward is like try to find some way to to get to all all types of people. You know what I mean? Whether they're in the mood for, for uh, you know, story time or whether they're in the mood to, to have fun and, and, and to go pop your crazy. butt. <laughs> yeah, Prince. I think Prince was probably the best at that, man. Like Prince, mm -hmm. you know, 1999. Or like he was talking about God most of all the time, you know, mm -hmm. let's go crazy. Mm -hmm. It's like while we're here and we're alive, let's enjoy it. But it's also nobody's paying attention to that. They just, you know, Pop doing the robot or whatever they was doing back in the 80s. <laughs> you know, so 
I love to I love to reach that level somehow. I think that's the hardest. Like, well, I think I listen. I think you're well on your way. I think you're already on the path. You're on the journey. Uh, I'm gonna boost you till I can't boost you no more because you're already all of everything you sent my way is already on air on the numbers FM. So. Y'all, y'all can always check out Plato the Third stuff on on uh, on the Numbers FM. And actually, we just started a Mixcloud account, so mm. now we can individualize um, music and playlists. So I'm already thinking, like, let me put your album on the on the Mixcloud, and then people want to like they can just come and search you individually and like just listen to your your, your stuff. I'm all about it. I'm gonna we're gonna do it. Beautiful. You're inspiring me. Um. What is what uh, you did? You did a performance at South by Southwest. Yes, yes, yes. And so I, I'm always intrigued at that 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 part of performance is the live performance is the connection right directly to the audience, you know. And I, I'm always interested in knowing what is your feeling when you're on the stage. What is is does something shift? I was a so I told you I was a professional dancer in my in my former in my former career, and. I was saying to my friend the other day over lunch, I was like, you know, I was the, I was the person that'll kind of dance in the back or I, I've never been a front person. But once the lights come on, once I'm on that <laughs> stage, honey, it. <laughs> you run to the front whether you're supposed to or not. You're my dream. I, I mean, I'm giving five, six, seven, eight full out with feeling like it's, yeah. it's, ah, yeah. that's what I live for. Come alive. Come alive. Yeah. Is that, is that a similar experience for you? You know, um. You know, it was it was a lot of fun performing in South by. I think for me, I was I was, you know, my songs dancing. I guess I can imagine being free and and lively. My songs were, were kind of heavy, and and seeing a lot of the people was in Texas, was in Austin, so a lot of people in the crowd that I grew up with. My mom was there, so doing a song like "Sorry If I Dissed You," you know, with with, with my mom there, and, and it's really about kind of saying sorry I just you to Texas and leaving all my friends behind and my family. Mm-hmm. So it was it was also emotional, you know, similar to probably how you felt, but in a different way. It was mm-hmm. it was heavy and it was uh cathartic at the same time to really get those out. But also fun, you know, we 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 mixed up the set and had a little bit of everything. But mm-hmm. I think for me the thing I took away most was uh you know realizing that I can I'm gonna feel those things when I perform those songs, no matter if I wrote them three years ago, five years ago, when those songs come on, all the feelings are going to rush back. So yeah, you know, it's, it's authenticity. I, did you okay? You know, it's really interesting that you say that about like that. Sorry if I dissed you, like the Texas, and sorry that you know you felt like you left like a community there. Um, when I left DC, it was that was at a it, DC was not <laughs> the place to be when I was growing up. Like you didn't stay there because. I mean, we had, we had, there was, there was, Dangerous. I was a statistic. I was, I was a statistic. I was not supposed to make it to 18. The, the HIV AIDS epidemic um, was, was everywhere. You know, it was just, you didn't get out of D, if you didn't get out of DC, you never were going to get out of DC. What age did you leave? 18? Um, yeah, I left yeah. I, as soon as I graduated high school. Uh, I was like, deuce. I was like, I'm out of here. no, no, no. I went to uh-huh. college in New York. I went yeah. to school in New York. Um, How would you feel about that? I mean, was it? I mean, if you, I kind of probably felt the same way. I feel like I was saving my own life in some way, man. Yeah. Different people, but you, you were probably just happy to get out and and well, you I was, know, happy to be in New York, but it's also a transition. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. I was fleeing. I honestly was fleeing. I I had this mindset that if I didn't get out, then I was never going to get out, and I needed that. T- and, and my mom passed, and then those memories that I didn't want to to resurface, I was like, I'm definitely not coming back now because I I I'm not emotionally ready. But now here I am getting ready to move back to DC after I've had these experiences, after I've done growing and 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 lived a full majestic life, and I want to return. And and in 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 pride and in wanting to mentor and wanting to give back. And so, I've never you know, condemned anyone for leaving and then, you know, and doing what they needed to do and exploring their lives and, and learning. And then, you know, you get to a place, I feel like at some point you do get to a place where you're like, I could make, even if it's temporary, even if it's just for a visit, just to return and reach back out, you know, and say, hey, yeah. y'all, like, this is what I was going through. This is what I was feeling. I had to. Is that something similar that you think you might? Yeah. 
delve yeah. into? One hundred percent. I uh, that was kind of always the goal for me. I had a song uh, on on my album. My first word was juice. Also, I miss my friends. Mm-hmm. It was kind of like the precursor to "Sorry If I Dissed You." Mm-hmm. Anyway, there I, I said uh, I left the city just to give me some pretty and bring it home. And the idea was always like there was nothing for us there, mm-hmm. but. I felt like it was on me to kind of like, like find whether it was knowledge or whether it was opportunity and sort of bring that back to our community mm-hmm. in order for people to ideally not have to leave, you know, not have to leave their family and their friends to to want to have the life of the opportunity they wanted. That's always been my goal. You know, I'm getting older. It's getting uh, harder to uh, potentially achieve that. But I think I think you have a, a responsibility to to share uh your experiences with, with those like yeah. you and, and, and it's no up. it's no disrespect to the where you where you come from either it's it's and I never want to like on DC you know like ever I just I hadn't fully grasped what all was happening you know there was just so many pieces so I never want to sound like I'm disrespecting DC or or anywhere where anyone's from I just that was just kind of my thing is like, I, I was running. I was running for a really long time. And you run like when you don't have like, when you have a single parent, you know, who's no longer with you, you know, it's like, well, shoot, I'm running around, like, <laughs> figuring it out by myself. Like, and, and I've you, had, <laughs> good. Now I was saying you need that sort of uh, alternate experience to be able to reflect and, you know, contrast mm-hmm. and compare. Like, I, I didn't know how, Texan I was until I got to right. LA, you know. What I mean? Right. And so you kind of need that to, to, I think, figure out who you really are and identify. Like, yes. I was talking about Fernet yesterday. I was like, I was really the pull up queen. Like, yeah. if I had beef, it was going to be it. like, I just came from like the era where people showed up to other people's high schools with bags a lot. Awesome. And I never realized how, like, aggr- not aggressive, but I mean, I just wasn't here for the sh- I wasn't. <laughs> I just DC, wasn't. DC and you. It wasn't. I like that everywhere. I like that everywhere. Um, I just, I just, this is just such a great, great conversation. I, I'm so glad we're doing this again. What, what's some of your um favorite collaborations on this album? You had Lil B on there. Did that? That was important. Just you know, for uh, for the 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 way he the way he like got through to us in texas just my group of friends is is uh ron Tom wonton soup came out he was just he had like a beacon of really positive energy uh, and i know some of his songs are more silly and loose but he's you know i talk about prince but honestly Lil b is another one to where you can turn up and get silly to Lil b but he has some songs that are really uh like really mind-blowing like age of information is incredible um no black person is ugly it's like a beautiful, heart wrenching, earnest song, and he does this. He's he's super smart, and he knows what he's doing. And uh, so, yeah, having him on the album was like a dream come true. And then, uh, just a lot of local talent from my hometown. I've always wanted to make songs with, but I never got to. Three 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 wish she sings mm. on a song called Never Get Away. Like her, her voice is beautiful, mm. and she's just like some of the most talented people I know you know, are just the most undiscovered people yeah. across the street that I grew up with. So for me on the album, I did get Lil B, but I wanted to tell people, like, these people on TV aren't more talented than your friend across the street. They just got more opportunity, got more people, you know, in their corner. But, you know, all of us, all of us have that light in us, and yeah. you know, we can make some really special stuff. You know, yeah. Some opportunity. So, yeah, most of the collabs are all all local, you know, hometown, homegrown. I love that. I have told people that all the time where people are like, oh my God, Brittany, you can sing so well. I'm like, oh, listen, honey, like, yeah. <laughs> I'm cute, but trust me, I know some people. I know some people. But that's great. I didn't, you know, that was one of the things I wanted to ask. Are there, is there a lot of talent coming out of um, Abilene? Am I saying it right? Abilene? Abilene? Yeah. yeah, Abilene. I would say so. You know, we don't have, like I said, we're three and a half hours away from any sort of main market. So we don't have a high, like a, a spotlight shown on us. I felt like that was my job to kind of almost showcase everybody on this album. So like if people like this album, it's because, you know, there's a lot of talent in Abilene because every song either has somebody playing an instrument or, you know, obviously me, I'm rapping or, or giving vocals and they're from this town. 
Um, yeah. yeah, so it's it's all, all wow. it's oh. like the you know, the dungeon family back in, mm-hmm. the day in Atlanta pushing out yeah. past Goody Mob. Goody Mob. Know, yeah, we, this, this was a Abilene Dungeon family record. So. Yeah. Love that. I love that. Um, do you have any um uh, upcoming performances at it at all? Or at some point, at some point I'm, I'm on a tour. I think what I'm hearing from the DIY indie community is it's really hard right now. Like gas is so high. Yeah. People are putting all this this investment in the touring and then they get COVID on the second show where they gotta cancel mm. the touring. And then a lot of a lot of bands are getting broken into. Also, I'm hearing. Oh wow. Um, so it's just a tough time. Uh, right now, my vinyl isn't available till November, so right now it's just pre-orders. But I think once I get my vinyl, then maybe it would make more sense for me to go, you know, tour town to town and have something to sell. Um, you got to come to Portland. Yeah. I, if you it tell, call me, let me know. I'll I'll yeah. I'll call yeah, whoever yeah. I need to call to get you out here in Portland because I can't miss you. I'll I I'll come it. back from DC. Yeah, or, or unless you go into DC. I'll go to, I'll go to DC. The, the way that I mean, this label is really great, and their artists do. You know, get to do shows everywhere. So, as long as you know, I still got to figure out how I got to pay my bills. You know, as long as I can go, you know, drive across the country for a month or two. You know, mm-hmm. I'll be DC. I'll be Portland. Um, but yeah, we'll see. I do know we got a, a remix dropping September first, oh. so that'll be the next release. Uh, we got a Jason who's also on my label. She's gonna remix Heaven, and uh, we got a we got an animated video for that, which is really really dope. And uh, then maybe, yeah, we'll drop You're something. Moving. Yeah, we're going to try to keep pushing it out there. And I just want people to hear the record, you know. Okay. One, yeah. one, one final question. What would Plato the Third tell himself at a... Where are we at in eight? How many years young are you now? 29. 29. You're talking about some getting older. Stay out of my face. Oh, Get out of my sorry. life. You're talking about, I'm getting older. Yo, no. you is not old. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a milestone. Actually. Yes. What would you tell yourself at nineteen from from twenty nine? Anything? Anything that would you would offer? Nineteen. I was in San Antonio, my first year of college. I had actually just met my my lady friend, um, and uh, that's where I met her. We have been together ever since, 10 years. So 19 to 29. Yeah. I would tell I would tell my 19-year-old self, you know, you found a good one. Stick, you know, stick with her. Uh, you, your next 10 years are going to be great. A lot of the reasons is going to be because she's by your side and, and everything, everything's going to be okay. I mean, if I could tell my 19-year-old self that I was going to be doing interviews with Numbers FM, you know, you know, radio interviews on community radio and, and have a have a music label, I, I would have I would have said no way. You know, so I I appreciate that question. It helps me to get perspective on a lot of my dreams have come true. People are listening to my music, asking me questions about it. And at the same time I do have uh you know love in my life that uh that I fostered from a long time ago. So I am blessed. I am blessed. And mm. if I can just if I can just figure out you know how does how does money thing work in America? Then I, the rest of my life is 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 pretty. pretty yeah, good. you and me both. Yeah. Only how it works: scamming, yeah. fraud, scamming robbery, fraud, lying. lying. <laughs> my, my mom always told me I could do anything I put my mind to, and I'm thinking I believe her. But the one thing I can't seem to do is make money. I got to figure out how. You know, that's the one thing. So I got a scam. I got a fraud. It, listen, I've been, it's I've been. Crypto I've, stuff. I don't think it's. I don't believe in this crypto stuff. I saw that crash. Good thing I avoided that. Good person. Good person. Where? Nah, nah. <laughs> you got to stop caring about people. Lose your empathy. Lose your sympathy. Yeah. Lose your compassion. Yeah. Um. Bro, I would, you know, I wouldn't mind being rich, but I don't want to be a rich person. But I don't know if you can do that. <laughs> it's crazy, right? Because like, I, I too, I'm, I'm in this space where I'm like, money just comes and goes. Yeah. Right. I, I, I just cannot see myself losing community over paper, wow. over over something that honestly, in my spirit, just I'm like, this isn't real. Yeah. You know, it's a tool. It gains you access to things, things that I just feel like you should not like things like <laughs> Medicare, schooling, 
She like, why do I need this? Yeah. <laughs> it just shouldn't be like that in my in my world. Um, but you need it, right? And for some of us, it, it, I I feel and understand it just takes us longer. It just takes us longer. I think there's a lot of filtering out. One, you got to understand, for me, I had to understand what do I want to do? How do I want, what do I love? What I love is what I'm doing with you right now, you know? And what I have loved was dance, being in the art. I knew going into that, that was not going to be the most lucrative experience, even though you put out max effort. Yeah. And sometimes it takes longer. And I think the big piece is just not allowing others to make you feel any kind of way for, for not having a, piece, a massive amounts of pieces of paper. Because the thing is, like, at the end of the day, if I die tomorrow, I can say I lived a majestic life. Yes. I can say I lived a fulfilled life. Yeah. I'm not taking the Benjamins with me to my grave. That's you true. know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's it, and that's why you know I, I focus on like you feed my soul. That's my priority. Feed my soul, yeah. and that a lot of times has nothing in common with you know giving paper. Yeah, um, if, if are you gonna say I made a lot? Are you gonna say I worked hard when I die? Like, like you're not gonna say that. <laughs> you're not, you're gonna, gonna, I, how did I make you feel? Yeah. Did you smile? Did we have a good time? It's the memories you create yeah. in these spaces. I get it. I get it. Money is. <laughs> I too. Listen. Yeah. I got quoted 20, 20 racks for moving from a moving company yesterday. And I said, oh. okay, girl, well, no, like <laughs> not today. That's, that's some nerve. Yeah. I mean, but they, I mean, they, they're, they're hauling you in a semi and it's like yours. So Across I was like, oh, two yeah. Deep. So I went to U-Haul and, you know, there was like three stacks and I was still like, do, 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 yeah. you know, and I was like, you know, but I was like, it's going to come, it's going to go, you know, it, you, it is in part education and, and knowing the right time in investments and saving and all that stuff. But like, it's, I don't know. A lot of it, you know, is out of our control too, is generational. Yes. And, and that's uh, the other piece. Yeah. Trying to overcome that. And also, you know, like it, for me, I'm, I'm not even talking, you know, I don't need to be anybody. I don't need to be, you know, raking it in, but just in terms of healthcare, you know, or, or having, mm. I like to, this is, I know it, this might sound like a flex. I would like to own a home one day. You know what I mean? These are just my simple, <laughs> yeah. These are just my simple, you know, normal sort of goals, have health care, own a home. I'd like to have a kid that has quality education. I and mean, that could be public, but, you know, uh, the private school around here, but 30000 a year. Like, what? 30000 a year, kindergarten through 12? And that's like, that's the school, and I looked it up. I mean, that's the school that these, all these artists are going to. Like, I'm not gonna out anybody, but a lot of people are able to go to these schools, and they have 12 years of art training, and you know, one to give, give. I guess it. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm yeah. gonna send that your way. No, no, it's gonna happen. I, I don't need all that, but yeah. But the home ownership, yes. Give me, give me a home and uh, and healthcare, and you know, I'll shut my mouth. And I'll be I hear you. Everything else. I hear you. All I want to do is sit on my wraparound porch in my overalls with my lemonade that is spiked. There you go. There and you watch go. my dog play in the yard because I'm not bringing no kids into this world. I ain't. <laughs> Every day, yeah. I'm like, are you sure you want to do that? But yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Listen. 100%. This That's not been... too much to ask. A spiked lemonade. It's not too much to ask. It's not too much to ask. That's what I'm saying. It's like, am I really require, requesting a lot from you? Universe? Environment? Put it out. Put it out there. Well, um, how, where can people find you? I, I'm, I'm so excited. I'm gonna, I can't wait to get on the website. I can't wait to see Let Me Be Frank. I cannot wait. No, it's, it's, no it's no insecure. But did you ever watch The Adventures of an Awkward Black Girl? Did you I go did. Back? Okay, okay. I did. Yeah, for real, she's super inspiring to me, yeah. and so I, you know, I, I know I'm gonna love rap shit. Just the idea of it, you know. Yeah, I would I, like to know your thoughts on that. Yeah. I really, truly would. I really love Issa. She's super yeah. inspiring. But yeah, Plato the Third dot com spelled out. Um, you know, and there's a few tabs on there for music. I guess that film's still on there, and yeah, you can you can see my socials as well. I don't okay. know what's happening with Instagram. You know, everything's changing. I don't even know. <laughs> there's gonna be social media in a few years but those yeah. are on there right now i don't even like being on the internet if i'm being real yeah. but anyways <laughs> tell me about it tell me about it well this this has been 
again, we made magic happen again, and it's recording, and it's nice. recording. If it don't happen, if this video, I, I'm going, I'm not even going to like, and I'm going to let you get off. Don't even I'm going to stay it. on and I'm going to get my director and be like, listen, how do That's I play? The right one. <laughs> I'm not losing this this time. I'm not losing this. But I, you know what? I, I, I'm, I just want to say this. I know we don't know each other like that, but I'm proud of you. I love what you're doing. Thank you so much for sharing this space and this time with me, offering this energy and just coming back to do the re-re interview. Um, I'm grateful. I wish you nothing but the best. Please continue to let us know how we can be here and support and, and, and whatever it is, you got it. 100%. No, thank you for having me again, Brad. Heck yeah. I'm a, I'm, we, gonna, we, have, we have performance events too. I'm going a, I'm to a book okay. you. I'm going to book you for Summer Series. <laughs> I can, hey, if I don't tour, I can always just drive up to Portland. I've, I've done it before. I got to check out that vegan spot you recommend. Yes, yes. Um, the I'm, buy and buy. The buy and buy. Yeah, I'm yeah. ready. But yeah, you as well. I can't wait for you to get back to DC. Show them, show me new tricks. You learn yeah. from yeah. Uh, traveling the globe and you know, bring it all back. Fantastic. Fantastic. Right. Congratulations. The album is um The Devil Has Texas. Y'all go stream, go support, go go check it, check it out. It's it's one thousand percent worth it. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. You, you work in radio. I'm talented. Yeah. <laughs>